Hi, everybody, especially those watching back on playback in case everyone else is stuck in ads. I don't know, but I can see we've got peeps in the chat and hello, Christine. Hello, Froggy. Oh, also Michelle's library. Hi. We will Hi. concentrate on your actual words later. Like, uh, this is a big statement here. Hi, this book changed my life. Like, that's hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear more details, Michelle. But first, let me welcome Lexi from Books of Lexi. Oh, shit. I forgot to freaking link you. I knew I forgot okay. something. She will be linked. She will freaking be linked. But it's easy. You could type Books with Lexi and find her as well. But I am so sorry. I know a lot of our friends follow us both. But just in case, please, if you guys don't follow her, please look her up. And I will have her linked right after this ends because I'm such a jerk. I forgot. <laughs> I'm I was like, so okay. proud the other day on the Halloween sprints. I was like, hey, I linked everything. And then I forgot this time. <laughs> you can't okay. win them all, I guess. Yeah. I have to do it like when I schedule it. Sorry, I'm posting this on Instagram. That's cool. Um, if I don't do it immediately, I forget. Yeah, I'm pretty much like that too. And I should have done it right away as well. But oh, well, it is what it is. I'm so sorry. Uh, I will say we're here to discuss Looking Glass Sound by an author that both Lexi and I love. But I would say it's pretty much one of Lexi's favorite all-time authors. Right, Lexi? Mm -hmm. Yes. You have given yes. every book of hers five stars? Or what about that older book? I didn't love Little Eve. Um, I gave it three stars. I think that I, I could see where she started and the growth that turned into how she writes now. But not a favorite yeah i figured like since that was such an early book of hers that you know you can't have them all be winners you know <laughs> especially when yeah. it's like your really early book but it's great that she's morphed into what she's become now mm -hmm. and i will warn everybody we will be talking about spoilers and with this book there are lots of spoilers um it's kind of hard to talk about without talking about the spoilers so i'm just gonna put it up now and hopefully People will know and will not get spoiled. Hi, it's great to see you. I hope you read it because like I said, I already put up the spoiler thing. <laughs> Can't decide which of you I enjoy the most, but you two are definitely the goats. Oh, thank you, Jason. Keep drowning us and kick ass content, please. That's so sweet. Thank you. Uh Oh, an outlier. Say oh, so it also changed your life. Hmm. To be fair, they kept switching their names in all the books. Yes, that is why it's going to be so hard to talk about this. I had to look up the names because I forgot. And honestly, getting into the book a little bit, I want to know what everyone else has rated it. What did you all think of it? And Lexi, are you ready to give us your rating? Are you going to hold it back for a second? Like, give me any thoughts you want to say. I, you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can give my rating now if you want. Give it. Give it. I'm scared. Give it. Okay. It is five stars, but it is below Needless Street and Sundial. I but am I'm on the same wavelength about like it's my third favorite of hers after those other yeah. two. Yeah. Um I have reread the other two though, and I feel like you gain a lot on reread of her books. So this one could change, but it's not gonna beat out Needless Street no matter what. I actually think I will raise this rating. I, I gave it a 4.5, which is still really high, but it's my only book from her that I have not given a five. So that's why it's my third favorite. And it's only that way because I think it's the most confusing. I could still understand it, but mm -hmm. I feel like if I would have taken my time a little bit more, I maybe would have just given it a five right off the bat. But I do think upon rereading, this could be one that it could change people's rating to a higher rating because mm -hmm. I think there's probably little things that you're going to discover along the way that will add a lot of depth and like just some extra yeah. bonus for you uh, enjoyment level. Yeah. Cause this one is like pretty slow um, and also repetitive, but I feel like in the repetitiveness, you're getting clues that you don't know you're getting. Mm-hmm. I actually like that because I think you're absolutely 100% right on that because it was obviously the pacing, especially in the beginning, I think was very purposeful. I think she's like setting things up and then like midway to the end, it kind of goes bonkers. And that's where all the twists start coming in like crazy fast and your brain's spinning. So I kind of like how it's almost like 
the book does a 180 going from like super slow almost like coming of age in a way Mm -hmm. totally different almost like an adult viewpoint looking back and i really like that it's a different book in so many ways the first half you know versus the second half Mm -hmm. So, ooh, okay, so we've got some interesting ratings here. 2.5 stars, that's why you said you were the outlier. Okay, I agree with Kelsey. A reread is necessary for me. I should have physically read it. I do want to bring that up, too. So our friend Amy from Amy Noel Reads read this long ago. She got an audio arc only. She did not have a physical arc of it at the time. I can't even imagine just listening to this on audio because listen to these names. You've got Sky and Sky, and the only difference between the two Skies in the story is that one has an E, but it's pronounced the same. So that to me, like I couldn't even picture having that straight in my head if I was just listening. I just listened to it, even though I have two copies. You didn't look at it? I only looked at it to see the, like, name or the word thing. Yeah. No. Well, that's where I think, like, somebody like Amy, who didn't have a physical copy, even if she wanted to check it, it might have made it a little Mm -hmm. more difficult. I do think it's one that benefits from doing both, especially if you would be confused easily at uh, a whole bunch of different elements being thrown at you in quick succession. Yeah. I, I did assume that, like, the sky, one had an E and one did not. Like, I figured yeah. there was a, a difference in them. And for me, it was it was fine. To, like, I didn't have any issues knowing who was who ever. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. The audio. I also read so much with the audio exclusively that I think I'm just a little more used to it. Also, I'm a pretty auditory learner. So, I think that helps, too. Yeah, I think all of that makes perfect sense. I am just getting into, like, I'm nowhere as experienced as you when it comes to being an audiobook listener. So it it does take me some extra concentration sometimes. And that's Mm -hmm. why I usually fall back on reading along physically, too, at the same time. (laughs) Uh, Katrina's like, yo, I DNF this, but I want to be spoiled. Well, it's kind of confusing to even explain it to spoil it in a way. Like, yeah. <laughs> her, it, it's almost like I did read an article, and I will say this is a really great article if someone is looking for a little bit of explanation without it spelling out every little thing. There is this website called Books, Bones, and Buffy, so booksbonesbuffy.com, and there's a review, and it's like an ARC review. Who wrote this, though? I don't know if this website's just run by the same person, but at the end, it even has like all the names and even the names of the books that are written within the book. So there's the mm-hmm. Dagger Man of Whistler Bay, written by Wilder, The Sound of the Dagger, written by Sky, S K Y. Then there's Sky, S K Y E, which is Wilder's second book. Then there's the fictional Pearl, written by Sky, S K Y E. And finally, there's the book. Looking Glass Sound, written by Pearl. See, I wouldn't have remembered any of that, mm-hmm. so I'm like, this article is like a godsend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you I don't read it, and I don't know if you would have remembered all of that. I, like, right now could not have told you that, but I was not, conf- like, I was never confused in the sense that I didn't know which perspective I was in. Um, So, I always knew who was writing what story when I was reading it. Yeah. But I couldn't tell you the character names in all of them other than Wilders. Yes. Because I know, like, skies were slightly different and, like, all of that, so. And this little article has those differences as well. It's like, I just saw it. Wilder slash Wiley, Harper slash Helen, Nat slash Nate, Sky, 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 Skander, uh, and then... (laughs) Is there any more? And then, like I said, uh, there's also Grace who makes an appearance, that special character that kind of gets yeah. drawn in. Yeah. Stephanie gave it a 4.5 stars. So that's the same rating as me. It's my f- favorite book by Ward. Ooh, that's a different take. I like that. Stephanie, is there a reason you like this one more than the others you've read by her? Five stars from Froggy. Liked it better than Sundial and haven't read Needless Street yet. Well, I love Needless Street. I'm partial. I think Sundial is my favorite Ward book out of the three that I've read. And 
I don't know. It's going to be hard for anything to beat it by her because I really love Sundial. But this one was so unique. I can't even imagine sitting down to write this. Like, can you even imagine? How does her brain work? <laughs> It's interesting. Okay, so I've seen her um, at like a live event, and I've also watched interviews with her. And the way she writes is the way she speaks. Or it, it, yeah, that is the way she speaks. So like, her writing style translates to who she is as a person too. So her brain is like this all the time. Wow, that's crazy. Which is nuts. <laughs> I know. Like, how do you live and exist when your brain's so like epic? <laughs> Right? <laughs> right. Like, I don't, I, I don't understand. She's so interesting. Like, I could listen to her speak for hours. So, like, for me, even when her books are slower paced, I'm still so interested in the way she's speaking. The reason it was an easy above four star read for me, like I knew it was at least going to be a 4.5 or a five because I listened to the whole thing in like a sitting, it felt like. Mm -hmm. Her books, there's something about her writing style, like you said, it's very compulsive for me. It's very easy to read. It's, but it's not like a typical thriller, which some thrillers are easy to read because they're fast paced and interesting. It's more about how she writes. There's just something very mm -hmm. likable and readable about it. And yeah. uh, it's very unique in my opinion, especially because I think she's a, an author who, who straddles the line between thriller and horror. You know, I mm -hmm. do think more thriller like uh, audience or readers, thorough readers are okay with reading her, even though I do think she has some horror centric elements. This one, not so much. I do think this book was more psychological. What did you think yeah. about like the, the spooky elements or the horror elements? It wasn't as apparent as some of our other books. Yeah, for me, I just, I think of all of her books as psychological, like technically they are thriller horror blends. But um, I think the psychological aspect of it is, like, the most important thing. And I think, especially in this one, I didn't feel... Like, I there was not a point where I was scared or even specifically thrilled. Yeah. Like, I, it was all just... Information, brains. like, flowing in, <laughs> like, yeah. absorbing. I just... But, like... Yeah. And with all that having been said, it was still compulsive, though. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's like, how does she do that? Uh, yeah. Which is really impressive, in my opinion. But it's okay if you guys didn't like it. Don't feel like a Debbie Downer. It's okay for it not to be perfect. And a three out of five isn't bad, by the way, for most people. For me, everyone jokes that that's, like, a terrible <laughs> rating. Like, if I give a book a three, I'm, like, bashing it or something. Or if someone else gives it a three, I'm like, you hated it. You hate well, it. Well, you have said that. I know. I know. I can't help it. Well, anyway, but but so Christine funny. does say that this author is a five-star author for me. That's good, though. And it's okay. Like, not every author's book's going to hit with everybody all the time. 3.5, yeah. very meta. I love how you reference how it's meta. Like I said, this article I was referring to, it is really cool because it it references little Russian dolls that fit inside of each other. Like, you know, those dolls where it's like a bigger Which doll. Which is a theme in another book as well. Really? Yes, you've read it. I, oh, wait, yes, I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> so this book is like that more than that book, I think, even. It's interesting because I got aspects of Sundial from this as well. Because they, like, um, Jack? No. I don't remember. I thought it was Jack. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember if Jack is the main character or the sister. Um, either way, that character is writing a book that is, like, reflecting... That's true. ...stuff as well. See, because you read reread, I can speak, because you reread Sundial, I feel like you remember the details a little bit better than me. It was more mm -hmm. of a... I went through it in like one, like just like this, one sitting and I was like, yeah, I love it. It's the greatest. But like, of course, when I go to remember the details, it's like my brain was going through it so mm -hmm. fast. I didn't keep it all in. It's the same thing with this book too. But like I said, I think that's one of the pros of her books is that and it probably also is going to make the rereading process because I'd love to sit down and reread all of her books. It's going to make it yeah. that much more enjoyable in my opinion. Yeah, I've reread... Um the two I will not be rereading Little Eve because I feel like it's not necessary but I will reread this probably the beginning of next year 
Yeah, that, that'll that be awesome to see, like, if your thoughts change or if you love it even more after the reread, which, mm. I, which I think you will, honestly. Yeah. Yep. See, Christine said she also listened to it, which probably made it more difficult. Yeah, I think if people really wanted to understand it and don't have as high of, you know, audio kind of comprehension as Lexi, in terms of she's just so used to, to listening yeah. to audio at fast speeds, yeah. I do think the physical copy helps a little bit to go along with it. I know I already read this, but I'm bringing it back up again because I did you DNF it? I don't even know if Katrina's still here, but if you, oh wait, she is still here. Uh, did you DNF it because it was kind of slow and coming of age in the beginning? Was there a specific reason that turned you off of it, Katrina? I think she told me she was bored. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I only did audio. Oh, well, Froggy still gave it a five, even with just audio. I'm a big fan of books in books and confusion. I do like a book within a book. I like that in movies as well. Like, there's this movie, In the Mouth of Madness, which there's like a book within the movie, and it's it's really great. Rally says, I read this a while back. I remember giving it a three star. How you doing, Rally? Thought I was going to give this a three, but went with a four. It would be a 3.5 if I gave half stars. It was my least favorite from her so far. Sadly, this was only a three. I will still immediately read whatever Ward releases next, though. Yeah, I just think she's a really creative person, obviously, with lots of ideas. So I'm super excited for what she comes up with next, but how can she keep topping herself? I don't know. I know all of her plots are so unique. Like they don't feel like anything I've read before. And like sometimes, like not specifically that like every single twist is like the newest thing and that like it's never been done, but just like the way it's done, it just like, I don't know. They feel, because I read a lot of thrillers. Like yeah. these just stand out for me. Um, I think that they are just completely different from other things that I've read. And I think that's why I gravitate towards her. Because, you know, I'm not a huge thriller reader like you are. Mm -hmm. But these books seem really accessible to me and enjoyable. And I like that, although she does play up on tropes and stuff sometimes, there's just something fresh about her writing. And I can't place my mm -hmm. finger on it. All I know is that, like, I definitely like it. Christine agrees that she will read whatever ward releases i remember being conflicted what to rate it because some parts i loved other parts annoyed me the way it was done i gave it a two i really want to like this but just didn't i do think it's a divisive book i could see why it's a divisive book it just hit for me though uh, it was like two books smashed together to me i do kind of think that in a way like i said the pacing is so different in the beginning versus the end but i think it kind of works for the story in my opinion but it's totally cool if you guys mm -hmm. disagree i need a freaking flow chart <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> like take notes while you're reading the book i love the first third thinking it was setting us up for some great coming of age horror then it just got too convoluted for me by the time i got to the end i didn't care i will say when i got to the end i was like trying to remember like certain things i know lexi you said you comprehended it a little more thoroughly me i was getting a tiny bit confused near the end but then i did grasp it mm -hmm. but it felt like i better like you know really remember what i'm thinking right now before it like slips away and then i don't remember like now <laughs> which yeah it just happened i don't remember yeah a lot happens at the end too and you're like oh my god wait what wait what yeah it kind of blew my mind hi mm -hmm. hi jen how are you? I did it totally audiobook and I was still able to follow along and always knew which narrative I was in, but I definitely see it getting too convoluted. I understand. Yeah, I understand. I love that for you. I started off really into it, but at one point it made me a little mad how they were changing it. I liked it, but did not love it. I still need to read Looking Glass Sound, but I will get to it this month. Well, I don't want you to get spoiled, so you might want to jump out, <laughs> Jen. But thank you for visiting with us. But please be careful. I don't want you to get spoiled. I DNF'd. I was just so bored and confused, was only listening on audio, so it could have been that. I do think for some people, it could have been that. And I wouldn't call it scary. No, not at all. I just would call it interesting, really. Oh, I have been well. Thank you so much, Jen. I do love her writing style. I can't even explain why. Same. On same. You like, all just need, you need to watch an interview with her. I do. I really should to see how she talks like you explained. By the way, you got two awesome books signed by her, right? 
I got three signed. So I have mm. this one signed. Um, and she drew a little boat. Yay! And then um, I have Sundial and Needless Street both signed. Um, there's a little cat in Needless Street and a sun in Sundial. That is so cool. Of them. She seems really nice and just awesome. Mm -hmm. She's very cool. For me, it was not scary. It was more like coming of age and true crime. I kind of agree with that take a little bit. Hi, Cassidy. How are you? Don't ever read this book. Why? Cassidy would hate this. She would? Well, She doesn't like the other two books. She would. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, I think I watched her read one of them in a hot tub. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought I did. <laughs> That's did. very specific. It was, it was Sundial. <laughs> okay, I knew it. That's weird that yeah. I remember that. It was just, the, that sentence was very funny. I know, I don't know. For some reason, it sticks in my head. She was like, I'm in a hot tub. I was like, it's the most Canadian thing ever. I, I'm not saying that she said that. <laughs> Not at all scary. I kind of agree. I only gave Needless Street three stars and I gave Sundial four stars. I had really high expectations for Needless Street and I liked the beginning, but I ended up not liking the end. That's understandable. I had high expectations too, but luckily I wasn't disappointed. So I'm glad. <laughs> I know you you were kind of nervous too. I was very nervous because... Um... So the reason I have two copies, I don't usually get two copies of a book. I got this... This is a UK copy um, whenever it came out in March because I was like, I can't wait until August to read it. Um, and then I was just scared. So I kept putting it off. And then the event that I went to, you um, got a copy. So obviously I did that and I got it signed. Um, so I have two. So I'm really glad I liked it. I know, right? It would have been kind of unfortunate if you were stuck with both signed copies and you, like, didn't like it. Especially after, like, loving her other stuff so much. I will mm -hmm. say, though, I like the UK cover, like, the color scheme of it. I really like it a lot. Yeah, it's green and, like, a gold. Yeah, I love that. It's very cool. There's something I like about it. Maybe it's just the colors. I kind of like it more than the US edition, personally, but both are cool. I can't decide. They're both, like, this one is, like, kind of deceptively ominous. Like, like that's a person there. I know, right? And it's like, someone's creeping on them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that sounds like a sentence I would say, yes. <laughs> Uh, I gave it a 4.5 rally, and go ahead, five. Lexi. Yeah, five. five. Um, so I was really um, very excited to see what you would rate it because I knew just how much you love her, and I was like, oh, no, is it going to be Is it gonna be I, a good rating? I think if someone else would have told the story, I would have been bored. It's yeah. just I love her writing, and her writing keeps me engaged. And that's what I was curious about because I knew it was a little bit slower paced in the beginning. And that's mm -hmm. the only reason I was like, I don't know if she's really going to give it a five. But yeah, it's just her writing style's really easy for me to digest. Mm -hmm. She is still a must buy author, but I'm now too loved, too disliked. And now it's coming down to the girl from the raw blood to break the tie. Is that like her new one? No, that's her second one. So oh, it's Little Eve, then Raw Blood, then Needless Street. Oh, so you haven't read that one. Mm -hmm. Are you scared? Are you ever going to read it? Or I will read it, but I'm pretty sure it's like very historical, oh. like Little Eve. That's not really your jam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to me, I feel like it's probably not going to be amazing only because I'm not saying that a book gets hype and if it gets hype if that's the only way the book is good i'm just saying like she got so much hype around needless street and i think it was because it was warranted i think people would have been talking about the girl from raw blood more had she had done something similar in that book but i'm guessing she didn't since it wasn't like it didn't explode like glass house did mm -hmm. that's just a guess though so please don't <laughs> don't mind my speculation you might still love it i don't reread Ral really at all but her books are the ones that i think would get better with rereads i agree yeah. and lexi can confirm <laughs> yeah oh i actually liked little eve well that's cool there's nothing wrong with liking that especially because you have read like 
fantasy type books before and if it's historical maybe it's more of like in that realm versus like the more thriller horror realm i don't know i haven't yeah. read those i think for me it was too confusing like i didn't know what was happening without reading the uk synopsis oh because the uk and the u.s synopsis are different and I was like, I don't, I would not know any information, like important information. Oh. Without reading the synopsis. I do like this comment. This book did teach me the term degloved, and it has already come <laughs> up in other books I'm reading. Uh, I learned that book from a Stephen King book specifically, but yeah, they use that word a lot in, in this book. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. Um. So at the event that I went to, she was talking about this is like, her, this book is her like homage to Stephen King oh really mm -hmm. I love that so that kind of is a cool little tidbit see we're lucky that Lexi actually went and saw her speak and has all of these little nuggets to tell us it's awesome uh yeah the not just the deep glove thing I'm sure I'm like stories within stories I'm sure that's something that King has done as well in a way yeah, I haven't read a bunch from him, so, like, I wasn't, like, picking up on the thing, mm -hmm. but um, she, I, I think a lot of it, too, with, like, it's about writers, and, like, that, I, I'm pretty sure, like, a lot of her inspiration comes from King, um, so writing about a writer, which I know he's done, isn't that? He it? does a lot, so, like, yeah, that would be, so, yeah, he, he writes about writers a ton, Mm -hmm. So right there is a similarity. I didn't even think of that. That's a good point. I love this comment too. This was like Inception, but as a book. So Inception, the movie. Yeah, I did think of that when I was reading. I was like, yeah, it's like layers upon layers upon layers. Um, but I loved it. Just joining, but I gave it five stars. Awesome. I actually felt like I followed it along pretty well, but maybe that's a reflection on how my mind works. Yeah, but that could be a good thing. I was bored. If I ever get the physical, I will attempt it in the future. Yeah, you might like it better that way. Maybe. I don't know. She does have such a good variety in her books and plots. There's no way to predict what she will write next. I know, right? I read it physically, but I could see how audiobook could be a bit confusing if you're not on Lexi level. Yes. <laughs> Without spoiling the part at college where she lied about who she was kind of ticked me off. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. And this is a spoiler, so if you want to read this, I would tune out right now because I am going to go into this. Are you talking about how there wasn't really a gay romance in it? Like, that part was fictional because that character wasn't real, like, in that right? Am I right on that, Lexi? There wasn't a, mm -hmm. a, um, a same-sex relationship. Like, yeah, really, I, like, because that part yeah, wasn't real. I think it was implied later that he was meeting men, like, whenever his wife was away for work and stuff, but mm -hmm. that specifically, because Sky was a female, mm -hmm. and then the Sky that is that is a fictionalized version of her that is a male so so you're right there that was alluded to that he did do that and that's why mm -hmm. his wife kind of left him so i will say uh, some people were mad about that but i don't think they were mad i i read something about people being mad because they thought it was using it almost like a gimmick i didn't think it was doing anything bad or wrong with it i, I didn't think it was I, offensive i took it as that is how female Sky saw him. Yeah. So she wrote this fictionalized version of him as he is. Yeah. But wasn't living. I kind of see your point there. I, I can see your kind of line of thinking. Um, that part didn't like phase me or, or upset me or anything. I thought I thought it was done well. Well, it's in, in all of her books. All of her books have some sort of queer characters in them. Yeah. I think it was supposed to, though. Oh, supposed to tick you off? Maybe. Not the hot tub. <laughs> yeah, the hot tub. <laughs> Love the UK cover. Yeah, me too. Or the UK version, too, because I liked it so much. Like the US cover, big fan of water on a cover. I do like like a nice, like, 
body of water on the cover. I also I can't want to say which one I like more. It's hard, like, because I really like them both. Mm -hmm. It's one book that I probably oh, would buy both versions. Oh no, Bowser. I also bought the UK cover and then sat on it for six months because I was nervous. Needless was my book of the year, so my hopes were way too high. Sometimes that can be a hindrance for someone when they have all these expectations. And it, it's hard going into a book like that uh, with your expectations like way up here. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be a while before I read Needless Street. These expectations are too high. I did not like Needless Street much, so you may really love it. Go for it. Grins. I love Sundial. I read it in one sitting. I like the house on Needless Street as well. I love a good degloving. <laughs> I love how it goes from like a normal comment to like a sinister Katrina comment when I could imagine her, <laughs> her little laugh she does. I love that. I didn't read any synopses and I was fine, but I could see that. Stephen King is where I found out about degloving. Me too. <laughs> you sicko. <laughs> It was also in Cotton Candy Massacre. Oh, yeah. I read that, too, in September. That's funny. Shout out Gerald's Game. Yeah. <laughs> Hugs Katrina. Inception is my favorite movie. Give me all the layers. I love Inception as well. Maybe that's why I like the book, too, because it gave me those vibes in a way as well. I was picking up the King vibes a lot and then just happened to be in the middle of American Horror Story double feature. The book is very atmospheric with the coastal vibes. That's true. I do like the coastal vibes a lot. Mm -hmm. That is upsetting, but that was part of the book that was written by Pearl where she fictionalized Wilder's life. Oh, I think that was the point of the book because did she have a right to tell Wilder's story that way? Hmm, that's an interesting point too. The beginning part's feeling true crime, like the almost drowning in the cave and the visions of someone out there in the water were very eerie though. Liked that. I did like that too. Uh, I love the whole idea of them imagining that Rebecca character underneath where they were in that cave. I could like imagine that in my mind. That was one of my favorite scenes actually, when they were about to pull the prank on him, but he actually almost drowned. Yeah. And that is like the true story. Uh-huh. Wilder's because it's it's his unpublished memoir. And then it's interesting because you don't really realize until later when we're not getting real Wilder's story and it's switching to someone else writing it. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It is. I love it. Do you, did you have a favorite character or was it just the vibes overall that is why you liked it so much? Um, I don't really have a favorite character. Um, I think it was just like overall, yeah, all of it, but it wasn't like a character made me love it. Yeah. Setting is also a nod to King. That's true. Set in Maine. Yeah. That's a great point. The poisoning parts and their connections were sad. I was like, no. At the end, when they were bringing up a ghost, I was like, what? And then started to laugh. I, I really liked, like I said, all the layers, all the references to other parts of the book, uh, all the books within the book. There's just a lot of things I liked. I don't think I had a favorite character either, because I don't think it was really about loving the characters. I think mm -hmm. it was just about the story unfolding. And can you guess what's the twist here? What's going to happen uh, versus a character study, um, like loving a character per se? I thought Wilder technically died before he got married and that was all made up. or And they were all made up af after that. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to... See, that's why this yeah, see, really he hard did, to analyze. <laughs> yeah, he, he did die when he was younger. I can't remember if he was married at any point. Like, I don't remember the age he died it was significantly younger than it was alluded to in the parts where like he goes back and sky is there and he finds him and all of that like that was not true mm -hmm. at, at 19, 19. Okay. yeah okay damn that's so young i want to reread it like right now like i'm like oh, i want to reread it because like i don't it's not fully like i'm not fully mm -hmm. remembering all the great details but i just feel like upon reread it's it could definitely be raised up to a five, I think. Yeah, but it, still, the, like, 
even though he wasn't married, he still did talk about, like, he had feelings towards Nat mm-hmm. in the initial one. What was with his vision issues near the end? Just to add the confusion, I thought that was a little on the cheap side, kind of like the always drunk female characters in thrillers. Hmm. I mean, I think it was misdirection or that maybe it was like symbolism that you can't, you can't take what he says like with uh, complete seriousness. Like you can't trust your own eyes reading his like that part of the story because it might not be like what you're actually reading your eyes can deceive yeah. you or like the story is kind of deceiving you then yeah if that I makes sense a, a really good interpretation i think the marriage was fake i thought pearl killed him at that hotel if there was a nod or influence of king then that makes sense because i do not tend to like most of king's writing but i can see how it is like king and the kids connection then the adults relationships yeah that's true yeah, I don't think that she changed her writing to make it like King's yeah, writing. I, I think, don't think there were was... just, like, certain nods to him. Yeah, like, like the main thing. Or, like, having a writer in the story. It doesn't mean that, like, her style of writing changed. It just means that she's doing these little, like, nods and winks to King. Like, mm-hmm. with elements in the story. Same elements that King has used. Like, degloving, etc. Yeah. Or, I read way too into the marriage thing. L-M-A-O. <laughs> no, I, no, think no. I think you're correct. Um, they were brothers, but he did not know that. Yeah. So, you know, incest, isn't that a king thing, too? It is. <laughs> well, sometimes. I think it's just a oh. vintage horror thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we all read this, but still have no idea what happened. <laughs> Lexi notes. Well, there's just so many things that were going on half brothers yeah 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 because wilder's dad was like constantly going off and having affairs and stuff so his it was his dad and then the woman that was never found yeah i think she was the first victim right Mm -hmm. technically yep the end was a soap opera and a half. Yes, but I liked it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe that's why I liked it because it was so drama filled and like like crazy, like culmination of a lot of things. Yeah, not my favorite way of it being told, though. I understand. Every comment, I'm like, wow, I don't remember that. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of it I don't remember either. Recent King likes incest. Apparently, what? <laughs> Well, some old king does, does some old king have incense, incest, not, I'm saying incense, Probably. like the stuff you breathe in. No, not that. <laughs> That's normal. You can smell incense in your house. It's fine. <laughs> Light it all you want, but we're talking about incest. No, we don't want that. <laughs> degloving, et cetera. Yes. Isn't that like a normal phrase? People say, you know, degloving, et cetera. <laughs> like, it's just a normal thing to say. I love that you liked it so much, Froggy. Yeah, I like that you liked it too, Froggy. Only read two King books. Yeah, I've read like 10 or 11, maybe 12. I don't know. I've read quite a few. So I can get once like you said that like it was like a nod to King. Then I started making the connections. But while I was reading, I honestly didn't mm-hmm. notice it. But when you said it, I'm like, oh, OK, this, this and that. Yeah. So I think we really pretty much broke it down even though it's only been 40 minutes it still feels like we've talked about it a lot but i do want to give you a chance lexi to say any thoughts about the book any thoughts about catrion award in general uh, anything you want to say about the reading experience <laughs> um i just i just want to reread it like yeah. i would be so interested because i've reread her two other books and i think that um i just like have i gained so much the second time because I knew it was happening so I could like pick up on things where she clearly said this is what's happening but like you don't realize it until the second time or like you do but you don't like Mm -hmm. certain things you get and then certain things you don't um so I think that this one will be even better upon reread I I love her I love her writing I will read anything she writes I'm still gonna read the girl from raw blood Probably won't like it as much, but, like, I don't care. Um, 
Yeah, I read all this today. <laughs> I know. You, like, finished it, like, didn't you say, like, an hour and a half ago or something? Yeah, I finished it at 6, and it's 7.41 for me. Um, but that was on purpose. Like, I could have finished it a lot earlier. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if I have anything else. I mean, the thing is, like, if I would reread, I feel like there could be a whole nother discussion. Yeah, me too. Like, if we reread it on the same day, I feel like then I could come back and have, like, all these big, like, <laughs> like mind-blowing mm -hmm. things to say. I, yeah. I just think it's one of those books you really have to sit with and think about and then revisit and then think mm -hmm. about it some more. I honestly think that will add so much to it, um, the, ex mm -hmm. the whole experience and to the whole understanding of what she was trying to do. Yeah, because while reading, I was like, this means something. I don't know what it means, but it means something. Because, like, there was, like, a certain thing that she kept repeating. And I was like, what does this mean? Yeah, yes. <laughs> I do like this comment here. You almost need to discuss after each chapter. I know, especially yeah. the second half of the book, when things start, like, being unveiled and stuff. I think that's when you really need to talk about it after each chapter so that you keep things straight. And then at the end, it's mm -hmm. fresh right after the end. Talk about it. Hold on. Let's see. Ward's, <laughs> Ward's king takeaways are incest and degloving. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty random set of takeaways. But of, co of course, there's Maine that she take, took away from King as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I think it's like a childhood perspective and then jumping ahead to adult perspective because it does yeah. that as well. I mean, lots of books do that, but King has done that a few times. Did you guys think that the magic worked and they were actually stuck in the manuscript from that last chapter? I thought it, it, it did. I don't know what to believe. <laughs> I love that. I thought that was so yeah. cool and, like, sinister. Like, bitch, stay in these pages. Yeah. Well, it was just, like, like interesting because as the character being written, he's like, wait, I am in this book. And you're like, you're what now? <laughs> yeah. No. And I think maybe I liked it so much because, like I said, it's the concept. It's not only her awesome writing. It's also the concept of a story within a story, which I've always loved. And if you've seen In the Mouth of Madness, the movie, it's just exactly like that in a way, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I was like, oh my God, I love this. It's just like that. And so it's just a premise that I enjoy, I think. I think it's a big risk to attempt that. Like, can you imagine being that ambitious? Can that be no. me? <laughs> I can't even imagine planning it and like executing it, like where it would be pulled off at all. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I can just imagine, like, I know you say she talks like she writes. Mm -hmm. but her level of brains is just so far above what I can comprehend because I can't comprehend thinking that way, you know? Like, no, I know. Same. With me coming up with it. I can't, I can't ever come up with something like that. Yeah. And I'm not being mean to myself. It's just like the truth, the truth. No, I am on the same page. Yeah. I, she is way smarter than me. <laughs> Which is cool. Just, it means she's a great writer. Yeah. Oh, I love this. It's she interesting too. Yeah, go she ahead. did not go to school until college. Really? And then she went to uh, Oxford or something like that. Oh, my God. Okay, so Oxford, right? that's serious. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. So she uh, grew up. Her dad was some, like, water treatment thing. I don't remember. So he was, like, moving around. So if you read the back, it says she grew up in, like, D.C., but also um kenya madagascar yemen and morocco because her dad was like doing like treatments and testing on like water for people to have drinkable water um and she never went to like a real school during that time that is insane so she must have been so, homeschooled or studied like you know wherever she was she's kind of said she like didn't even really do that that's insane and then all of a sudden she gets into Oxford and she's like, yo, I'm just going to go to Oxford now. <laughs> yeah. I think when she was like in the high school age, she probably like realized that she was like interested in certain things and like whatever. And I guess she had to have gotten her GED or the equivalent yeah. in the UK or whatever, because like they're not going to just let some random person into Oxford that has <laughs> zero qualifications. Yeah. But, like 
Yeah, so she like she didn't have a formal education until she was at the college level. I love that. I had no idea, and that actually makes her writing even more impressive. Honestly, like I know, I'm kind know. of astounded by her. Honestly, <laughs> yep. I love that you're taking notes to help with your reread. That that makes me feel good. That's so cute. Uh, my summary is that I don't think Ward books are for me, but excited for people who love her work. Oh, that's sweet. I can't wait to read more because I love this so much. Yay, I'm so glad to hear that. You almost need to discuss, like I said, to repeat that after every chapter. I like that idea. Yeah. Live reading sprints with discussions in between. I know, to keep it fresh. I'll pick up anything she puts out. I'm glad you guys picked this for the book club. Yes, and thanks to Lexi, by the way, because she's actually the one who picked it for my book club because I was giving Patreon members, like, the opportunity to pick a book, and I spun a wheel, and Lexi's name was landed on. And so she's like, we should read this one. I was like, okay, yeah, you know I'm down for that. So it worked well, out. Because I remember uh, texting you and being like, what do you think about new releases? <laughs> because typically you're not like reading books the month after they're published. Um, and I was like, there's this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am glad that you pushed me to do a new release. Cause like you said, I don't typically do that for my book club because I like to kind of just be random and just go, mm -hmm. sometimes I do newer books, but not usually new, yeah. new releases. So this is a little different for me, but I'm glad you pushed me to do it because I might've just kept waiting and waiting, especially because of the nervous factor of loving her other books. And for some reason that makes me wait. Like Grady mm -hmm. Hendrix, I still haven't read Horror Store. Like I kind of wait mm -hmm. and I spread out the books of his that I haven't read yet because I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to read it like yet. So <laughs> it's kind of the same idea, but I'm glad you pushed me to do it. Uh, yeah, I'm so glad I did end up doing this. Yeah, it would help. Maybe if, you know, I ever reread it, I would schedule it again. Or maybe, Lexi, you should do that with your Patreon or something. <laughs> that, or just do something around it since you're probably going to reread it no matter what anyway. Yeah, I did a spoiler vlog when I reread Sundial, but like a live thing could be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. I want King's hot take on this convo. <laughs> Thank you for bringing degloving into our minds, King. <laughs> I want to believe the magic is real, but I agree with Lexi. Yeah. Degloving and sibling loving. <laughs> That's a nice poem. A title of a poem or something. A poem. How come both of the books uh, that we had discussed have, like, incest vibes? I don't know. Crit. Oh, yeah. Mega mind for real. I know she's really impressive if she didn't have formal education and just was like, I'm going to Oxford. <laughs> Why does that sound like a disturbing bumper sticker? Because it does sound like it would be a disturbing <laughs> sticker. Many times I find authors more interesting than some of the books they write. That's funny. Yes, very smart. That's amazing how she. Uh, <laughs> wait, that's amazing. Shows how useless grade school is. I agree. <laughs> Kelsey, I'm getting. So sucked into the book, Apartment 5 is Live. Oh my god, that's my book club. <laughs> I'm so glad you're getting into it. I haven't started it yet. I'm going to start it during one of the Hollow Weekend weekends. Yes, that, well, by the way, thank you for bringing that up, Rally. So Apartment 5 is Alive is my book club book for the month of October. There will not be a live show like there is right now, but there is a discussion area up on Discord. You guys know that you can hide spoilers, but just a reminder that you can do that by using the two vertical lines before and after the text you want to hide. So I encourage that because, yes, there won't be a live show just because, you know, October is busy for everybody. And also, Lexi, aren't, isn't your book club taking the month off this month? Yeah, that's what yep. I thought. Yeah, Who our November read for November. This one, Midnight is the Darkest Hour. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I'm gonna have to read it then. Another new release I have to read, but I'm, yes. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, that's our November pick. Um, that will be on Monica's channel. Cool. Um, I'm so excited because I get to see her again on the 28th, I believe. So, of October. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Yeah, um, she's coming up here. Um, and doing a tour with Danielle Valentine, who did Delicate Condition, Ooh. the conditions. Um, and, like, the new American Horror Story season is based off of that book. Um, yeah. Which I've, I've actually, like, she was with Darcy Coates whenever I saw her in oh. May or June or whatever. Um, so I'm really excited to go to that. So. 
Not that's going to be really fun. Are you planning to read it before you see her again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. So that, that'll that be really cool to see how it all plays out. Are you going to reread it, you think, before your book club? Because obviously it's probably going to be a whole nother month before you talk about it. Yeah, I'm not sure. So Michelle has already read it. Um, oh. She read the arc. Um, Monica is going to the event with me in October. So I'm assuming she's also going to read it before then. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. We might have to take notes or maybe reread it. I don't know. <laughs> Look, she's reading it now I and it's know. so good. I know. That's exciting, Katrina. I'm glad you're liking it. You're making me want to read it now too, but I'm going to wait. If I'm going to go to the book club chat, I might as well just wait or something so it's fresh. Yeah. We've been doing our discussions like mid-month. Like We're doing it usually the week before the last weekend so that we don't have to compete with everybody. Yeah. Maybe that's why we love her writing style so much it wasn't corrupted by school at any <laughs> age. <laughs> oh, stop whining. Stop whining. Sorry, he's whining because he has food, so I don't know why he's whining, but I think it's because, I don't know, <coughs> you want to go outside? Oh, that's why. <laughs> he did his head tilt. Okay, just hold your horses for a second, I promise. <laughs> like, what the heck? Stop with that's your so crumbles. Funny. All right, guys, I think Jackson wants us to go. So I'm going to end it here. But I want to say thank you again to Lexi for hanging out, for reading the book, for proposing the book, and for being here with the chat with us all. And also being the one who has it the most fresh in her mind, because I do not. <laughs> so it well, I still got some things a little messed up. So <laughs> it well, was like, a That collective. just shows you just a, an hour after you're still like, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It could really use some analysis. Yes, Jackson. He <laughs> Jackson is the prince, and he's demanding that I let him outside. I will be here in a second, I swear. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you once again. Lexi will be linked after this chat is over. I will go back in and link her. But if you need to find her, she's at Books with Lexi. She's awesome. And thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out and chatting. Bye. Bye.